Your engine produces torque and horsepower. So, what exactly is the difference between torque and horsepower, and which is more important? To understand horsepower and torque, we need to first understand the concept of work. And we don't mean your job, unless your job is applying force to something to get it to move, like a mechanic's job. In this case, you really are working in the scientific sense. The force you use to move something is measured in pounds. A pound of force is equal to the gravitational force on a mass of one pound on the surface of the Earth. Work is the force you apply to something to move it. So, pounds multiplied by the distance you move it in feet. Work is measured in foot-pound, which can get a bit confusing since the technically correct measurement for torque is pound-foot. Foot-pound, pound-foot. I guess it might give teachers some fun. Torque is a twisting force that's applied at a distance. So, take a wrench, for example. You apply a force on the wrench, which becomes amplified by the distance of the wrench lever and supplies a torque at whatever you are tightening or loosening. The greater the distance from the axis, the greater the torque. Think about a door. You don't push a door open closer to the hinges because it's harder. The further the distance you are away from the hinges, the easier it is to open the door. So how do we measure torque? Let's go back to our wrench example. If you apply one pound of force and use a one foot long wrench, this is equal to one pound foot of torque. Torque is force multiplied by the distance of the lever. You can apply more torque by applying more force or increasing the distance from the axis. So if you apply two pounds of force and use a one foot wrench, that equals two pound feet of torque. But you could also apply one pound of force and use a two foot wrench and that would also equal two pound feet of torque. Let's see how this applies in an engine. The explosion is created in the engine. This creates a force. The force of the expansion pushes the piston downwards, which applies force on the crank pin that turns the crankshaft. So torque is equal to the amount of force on the pistons multiplied by the distance of that force from the center axis. You can increase the torque by increasing the force on the pistons created by the explosion. Or you can increase the torque by increasing the distance from the center axis of the crank pin to the center axis of the crankshaft. You can also add gearing somewhere down the system, but we won't get into that for now. So that's torque. Now let's move on to horsepower. Power measures how quickly work is done. So if two people were to tighten the same bolt by applying the same force, but one did it in half the time, then that person is more powerful. Of course, we use horsepower when talking about cars or engines. Why horsepower? Well, that's an interesting story. It's the mid-1700s. The place is Green Rock, Scotland. A young boy sees a kettle boiling. He notices the steam forces the lid to rise and sparks an interest in the power of steam. The boy is James Watt. You say his name every time you talk about a light bulb. So James is into power. He doesn't invent the steam engine, but his improvements to it are so radical he's known as the father of the modern steam engine. James simply adds a condenser. This increases efficiency so much that it can produce the same power as the competitor engine while using 75% less fuel. This invention kickstarts the industrial revolution. But before this happens, James needs to sell his engine. So he has to figure out a way to explain the huge technical advantage of his engine to ordinary people. He could just say, my engine does the same thing as a newcomer engine, but uses 75% less fuel. But this is a bit of a mouthful. So he has to figure out a different way. Now, of course, steam engines are pretty much new in those days. People didn't really understand steam engines or what they can do. What people did understand was horses. If you want to pull something heavy, you get a draft horse to do the job. So James needs to find a common way to compare horses with steam engines. And being an engineer, he loves numbers. So he decides to figure out how much work a horse can do in a given time. There are different stories about how he does this. For all we know, they might all be true. Perhaps he did more than one demo to sell his engine. Anyway, one story goes that Watt measures the work the ponies do lifting out the coal of a mine. He works this out by multiplying the weight of the coal by the distance it's lifted. That's foot-pound, which is work. Then he calculates how long it takes for the work to be done, because that is power. On average, 
Each pony can do 22,000 foot-pounds of work in a minute and maintain that rate throughout the day. So the measurement of pony power is 22,000 foot-pounds of work in one minute. James simply increases this by 50% to convert it to horsepower. Why? Well, horses are about 50% bigger than ponies. So the measurement of horsepower is 33,000 foot-pounds of work in one minute. You can adjust the combination. So one horsepower can raise 330 pounds of coal 100 feet in one minute, or 33 pounds of coal 1,000 feet in one minute, or 1,000 pounds of coal 33 feet in one minute. So long as it's 33,000 in one minute, you have one horsepower. Horsepower can be converted into other units as well. So one horsepower is equivalent to 746 watts. If you take a one horsepower horse, that's a horse that can rate 33,000 foot-pounds in one minute, and put it on a treadmill, it could operate a generator producing a continuous 746 watts. So the value of horsepower is not absolute, but the apples to oranges comparison works wonders for James. It helps the owner of a draft horse know that a steam engine can do five times more work than a single draft horse does. So that's the story of how horsepower was invented. And here's the thing, we can't actually measure a car horsepower. It's a man-made number, but we can figure out what it is if we know torque and RPMs. And we can measure torque and RPMs using a dynamometer or a dyno. The earliest version of a dyno invented to measure torque was in 1821. It was called the Pony Brake. If you're thinking, shouldn't it be Pony Brake? Horsepower, Pony Brake, makes sense. Actually, no. It was the Pony Brake because it was named after its inventor, Gaspard de Prony. The similarity of pony and horses is just weirdly coincidental. Or is it? Modern dynos can measure torque in revolutions per minute or RPMs. We then use math to work out horsepower. Torque times RPMs divided by 5252. But why 5252? That's a whole lot more math. But basically, the faster the crankshaft spins with the same amount of force, the more power the car will have. Remember the two people tightening the bolt. They both turn the bolt using the same torque. The one who did it in half the time is more powerful. So let's talk about torque and horsepower when it comes to diesel versus regular engines. Diesel engines produce more torque while petrol engines produce more horsepower. Why is this? Well, imagine we have a diesel and regular gas engine and say for the purpose of this example, they're exactly the same size and diameter. Compression is higher in a diesel engine. That's because a diesel engine must compress the fuel air mix so much that it spontaneously explodes. In a petrol engine, the mixture is ignited by a spark instead. The explosion spreads from the spark outwards. In the diesel engine, the explosion occurs simultaneously everywhere in the engine. This creates a more forceful explosion. Also, since the piston has to travel further in a diesel engine, the distance from the center of the crankshaft to the center of the crank pin, or throw, can be greater. So this is more force multiplied by a greater distance, which makes more torque. But this also means it takes longer in a diesel engine for the crank to complete a revolution. The shorter throw and stroke of the gasoline engine results in higher revolutions per second, which creates more horsepower. Now, it's not surprising that torque and horsepower get confusing. It's a complicated relationship. It gets even more complicated when you introduce other factors like weight and gearing into the equation. So what does it mean for you? Torque gives you lots of low-end power. If you need to do a lot of work, like towing a horse or pony, or you're traveling long distances, then torque is what you need. If you're traveling shorter distances and you want speed and the ability to overtake on a highway, then what you need is an engine optimized for speed and torque, in other words, horsepower. A lightweight sports car can operate on high RPMs, which will give it high horsepower, even though it has relatively low torque. But it's not going to tow your boat. So what's more important, horsepower or torque? They both are, but for different reasons. We have more exciting car content coming very soon. So subscribe below and ring that bell to get notified of our next video.